this is a demonstration of a simple gadget called a dip oscillator helper. Here we have a, uh, a standard uh, dip meter, also a dial which has behind it a variable capacitor. The scale on the dial has been calibrated to give me the value of capacitance. This is a view at the back of the dial. You can see the capacitor there. And two rather heavy terminals with short leads to the capacitor. There's also a switch on the side here which allows me to parallel both sections. That's both sections in parallel. That's this, that section only. Here you can see the dip coil nearby and presently on it I have a small toroid. I'm trying to measure the inductance of the toroid for a, some low pass filters for a transmitter. Right now I'm making the toroid for the low pass filter which is used for the 10 meter band. Its inductance is 168 nanohenry, it's quite small. So here's a view of the toroid I've wound. It's a, uh, a type uh, 10 material, T37-10. Through the middle of the toroid I have a single piece of wire connected to a crow probe which is switched to by one mode. The crow probe feeds a frequency counter. Uh, th there's a view of the frequency counter and it's currently picking up a signal from the grid from the dip oscillator. So the dip oscillator is switched on at the moment. Now uh, there's a better view of the dip oscillator. I'll just turn the meter down. You can see the little needle there. Now the idea of this uh, dip oscillator helper is that I can now swing the tuning capacitor knob until I get a dip and you'll see a small a very small dip at the moment I'll zoom in on the needle you'll see a very tiny dip and if I bring the the dip oscillator closer to the um, to the coil I'll just show that by sliding it across like this you'll see the um, needle move Okay, so if I now move the thing away slightly, I get a smaller dip. The smaller the dip, the more accurate the reading will be. And again, if I move it very close to the coil, you see a big dip. Okay. Move it closer and further away. So now, well, as I adjust the dial, and you'll notice it's around a reading of around 86. Get the best dip, and then I have a small chart here, which is a plot of the dial reading versus capacitance. At uh, 86 is around there, and ends up here somewhere on the red line, which is both capacit both sections of the tuning capacitor. Um, connected in parallel and that's a capacitance of 240 PF. With that value I can now go to my react, uh, resonant frequency calculator and find out what the inductance of that little coil is and it does come out to 0.168. Sometimes it's difficult to get exact values with toroids because you can only take a, a full turn out. You can't take part of a turn out so you have to get the closest but this one happens to come out pretty close. You can squeeze the, the wires together and squeeze them apart and you will get a variation there which is quite useful. So that's the dip oscillator. Very handy because you're not actually turning the dial of the dip oscillator. You're turning the dial of the of the uh, capacitor connected across your, the inductor you're trying to measure. You're doing this. It tends to um, get past the problem of false dips because you'll only see a dip when this is moving so you know you're pretty close. You know that it's the resonant frequency and not a false dip. 